Welcome back. The pandemic has certainly had an impact on how we work. And a new survey done by the Hartford shows it also has had an impact on how burned out we are from that work. Joining us to talk about the findings is Jonathan Bennett. He's the head of employee benefits at the Hartford. Jonathan, thank you for being with us. I know this is kind of a two part survey because you did it just recently in July, but you had looked at it before. So just in a, a few sentences for us to start, what did you find out? Well, this is a survey, Eric, of uh, U.S. workers uh, nationally surveyed. And uh, we took a look to see how people are faring uh, in the pandemic as things linger on. We've been conducting this work, as you point out, for uh, quite a long time, really throughout the pandemic. And what we found is that rates of burnout uh, are, are really persisting. Uh, they've been at a high level uh, for quite some time, and they continue to be at that level. And I think importantly, as we unpack the numbers a little bit, what we find is the, the uh, disparity between men and women has grown uh, over the last three or four months in particular. Uh, with women reporting more uh, cases of burnout, more sense of burnout than, than men. So uh, it continues to unfold, but uh, it's a persistent problem and, and one that we see growing. All right, I want to get to that gender breakdown in just a moment, but let's start just with the overall exhaustion level. Uh, you came in at 61%. What do you attribute that to? When did the, Do you have any ideas? Is it people, too many Zoom calls, working from home? What, what leads to that kind of number? Because to me, that sounds high. It is high. The number of people reporting that they sometimes, uh, and even in some cases all the time, feel exhausted is, uh, has certainly been persistently high. It, it is, I think, as you described. Uh, you know, this has been going on now 18 months. Uh, we have been in this cycle. People have changed their lives quite dramatically in many instances and uh, have changed their work habits, their personal habits. Uh, and what you find is, is that with all of that going on, there's a level of fatigue that sets in. Uh, I think there was also, you know, more recently, uh, a sense of optimism that perhaps we were going to come through this successfully in the summer. That kind of broke the other way. And with the Delta variants onset, uh, we began to realize maybe it's going to go on a little bit longer. Those kinds of moments hit people pretty hard. And uh, I think has uh, caused people to, to reset a little bit and, and probably feel that fatigue even more greatly than they had before. Fatigue leads to exhaustion. And I think the, the tiresome nature of it all has got people really reevaluating how they think about the balance between work and life and what's important to them. So that's all coming through in the data. And it, it may be tough to have that balance when your office is just down the hall from the kitchen or maybe in the kitchen or, or in the living room. Uh, one of the things you mentioned at the beginning of this interview is there is a disparity and a growing disparity between what female U.S. workers are reporting and male U.S. workers are reporting. Tell us about that and, uh, and kind of what you make of it uh, in your findings. It links pretty well, uh, Eric, with things that we have seen in other publications and other research that's gone on during the course of the pandemic. Women have uh, carried a, a disproportionate load as they balanced in many ways between professional and home life. Uh, when they came home and uh, found that their career and, and work uh, and their home life were merging, uh, there were kids at home needing to be schooled and cared for. In many cases, women, you know, their adult daughters uh, worried about elderly parents and uh, nurturing uh, those situations as well. So with all of that kind of coming in uh, at the same time, it no doubt creates a, a higher level of fatigue and the need to balance more carefully uh, and calling into question, I think, uh, where they can set their priorities and, and how to make all of that work. So uh, I think it's not surprising that we see that kind of a trend in the data and, uh, and continuing still, even though we know, you know children are getting back to school, we're seeing encouraging signs there, finding ways to, to cope with that. Uh, it, it's not uh, back to normal by any stretch. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot to be worried about, even if you, uh, you know, have children under 12 who are not vaccinated, you're concerned, thinking through all the different uh, risks that may be present there. So a, a lot to weigh on, on uh, mom's mind as, uh, as she's balancing career and, and home. And uh, those numbers actually increasing from February to July. So uh, those the, the women reporting that they're burned out, that number going up while the men's number going down. Certainly interesting. I want to take you to our next graphic, Jonathan. 37 percent of U.S. workers say they're likely to search for a job in the next six months. Is that a surprising figure? And, and, and what do you make of it in the midst of a pandemic? Well, again, I, we come back to, you know, this has caused uh, a lot of people to reconsider what it is that's most important to them. Uh, in, in work and in uh, personal life too. And uh, with the, the pandemic lingering on now 18 months, uh, a lot of reason to consider what is it that they really expect 
uh, out of their career opportunities in, in their employer. <clears throat> and so it, it is in some respects concerning, definitely that number is quite large. Um, you know, as, as a potential turnover pool, that would be very significant to, uh, to many employers. However, uh, you know, there's a lot that can be done, but um, I think of a big caution that we would point, point out to employers about how their workforce is uh, feeling right now, their attitudes towards work, and the things that would make them stay uh, and want to be a committed member of the team. Yeah, let's, we have a, one graphic showing some of the reasons why they might search for a new job, better salary. I mean, I think that's the, the, the oldest time-tested thing. Everybody wants more money, but there are some other things in flexible schedule, workplace culture. Uh, that uh, definitely speaks to, to the pandemic times and what everyone's experiencing. We also have a graphic, Jonathan, showing what people want to stay. 63% uh, who say they don't plan to search for a job in the next six months also gave you some factors. And it's some of the same stuff, actually. So if salary and benefits and flex schedules are why people are staying, maybe those are things that employers should be thinking about that, hey, the more I offer this to my people, the more they might hang around. I totally agree with that, Eric. I think that that's spot on. You know, the, um, you know, the work employers have to do certainly is to stay competitive in the marketplace, and that involves pay. Uh, it also involves career opportunities uh, and so on. But, you know, flexible arrangements have become more important. We've heard a lot of stories about people working remotely, beginning to really appreciate and value working remotely and looking forward to a post-pandemic uh, time when they can continue to have that kind of flexibility. Uh, in some cases, it, it opens up uh, new geographies. You can uh, choose to live in a different place uh, because your work is no longer bound by that local geography. With that in mind, I think employers really do need to wrestle with the question of uh, who needs to be in, when do they need to be in, what's important uh, as they think about their own workplace productivity uh, and, and culture, uh, how do they really think about what, what options they can provide to workers who are now increasingly seeking this flexibility. It is uh, going to be, I think, uh, one of the great takeaways from the pandemic uh, that uh, in the workplace, people are gonna be seeking those kinds of options. And uh, certainly interesting and a lot for employers to consider. I mean, people starting new jobs where there's not even an office for them to go to and they only meet people the way you and I are meeting uh, their head in a box uh, talking into a screen or a camera. So uh, certainly interesting stuff. Jonathan Bennett, head of employee benefits at the Hartford. It's a fascinating study. I'd encourage people to Google it and take a look. And I'm sure you'll be checking in on everyone on the workers again. And maybe we'll talk to you in the future. Thanks for being with us. Very good. Thank you.